Morning guys, Mark Frash, Pro Tech Dog Trainer. Been doing a lot of the videos with uh, Doby the Fear Biter, and I've got now the muzzle off of him. It was kind of forced on me because he had that sore on the top of the nose. And so we took it off last night, and I figured, okay, I'll just try to see if I can work him. He's happy to see me. He's licking my hand. He's all right, but there's a lot of fear and apprehension in him. And I was just on that video, and I just posted the video talking about his paw coming up, right, and him wanting to climb my body with two paws. Actually, to be honest with you, it's really not dominance as much as it is fear, but there's a tendency for the dog to try to be defensive and put his paws up and, and to do that. And it's not really true dominance, right? Dominance would be where the dog really wants to eat my ass, right? It's more coming from the realm of uh, fear and insecurity. Right, so that's where it's coming from, but it is a move that you can kind of relate to a dominant nature. But it's because he doesn't want to be submissive because of insecurity and fear, right? That's why he doesn't want to go down and all that good stuff. The dog gets stiff and doesn't want to, you know, there's a lot going on in that dog's head because of everything he's been through. It's um, kind of a sad case in a way because he's a pretty intelligent dog, he would have been a dang good dog if he didn't have this happen to him. So but it is what it is. This is my job to try to improve the dog's lot in life by giving him uh, obedience and making him stable and allowing him to be able to be in a more uh, developmental posture. In other words, a baseboard that gives that you're going to give to the owner and be able to have them have something to work with, right, that he didn't have before. And also having my um, interaction, like you hear me talking about on the videos, I'm getting in the dog's head trying to understand why the dog is where he's at in the emotional state of mind that he's at and how to get the dog to grow you know how to grow the dog to where you can have something that's a that's a communication baseboard and a foundation that gives you something to build on and I like to think of it just like booting a computer right when you're in the very beginning you had nothing and you have to boot it from the very bottom and you have to start building you have to start layering on behavior on behavior and and in this case it's more about being conscientious and aware of the dog's emotional states of mind okay behavior is when a dog does something when you ask him to do it sit down whatever it may be that to me is always secondary to anything I do in training. I want to know where the dog's head's at in the, in the work. I want to be able to understand a manipulation of drive states, fear, the things that we're dealing with in, the, in this case is a lot of fear and apprehension um, and that is caused by the dog going through a very traumatic time in his life at very imprintable times. When the dog's young, that's when he's going to, almost like taking a hot brand and branding the dog, right? That's when it's going to stick in their head and it's going to be there the longest and the most uh, prevalent and have the most effect on the dog's overall emotional states of mind in life, right? That's why it's so important to do all the work we do with puppies uh, and do all that because you're catching that dog at a very impressionable time period in their life where you're being able to establish and mold and shape that clay and what that dog's perspective is emotionally okay because it's all about that it really is dog, people don't understand that you know uh, when you're happy when you're sad those are all emotional states of mind we call them in dog training drive state right but in reality and truth is it's it's all about the dog's emotional states of mind yes it is drive state you know what i mean that we can relate it to that because that's what we call it in dog training. But reality and truth, it's it's all about emotional states of mind. Is the dog excited? Is he uh, stimulated? Right? How good am I at manipulating and being able to read the animal? You hear us talking about reading the animal all the time. That's what you're doing. You're basically being able to sense and feel his emotional states of mind and being able to um, create them and manipulate them into what you need to to be able to work the dog. Right? So. All right, I'll let you go. I'm here at the grocery store early in the morning trying to get beat the heat. I got a little few chores to do today. I right, thank you much. You have a good day. Mark Frosch, Protect Dog Training, yakking at the screen about dogs as always. Talk to you later.